In this video, we're going to take the Goblet of Fire and see what it would have been like if Harry was never there. Now, it's been a few weeks since the last... Uh, oh, no. Uh, okay, I've been gone a while, but for those of you that are still here, thank you for your patience. I haven't been working on the video all this time, so lower your expectations. No, probably lower than that as well, actually. Yeah. Uh, while I was hiding, I did accidentally make a viral video on my second channel about a small child being turned into chess pieces. Uh, but that isn't why I was gone. Honestly, it's just a lot of work to make these, and I just didn't have the energy. But all of these comments that you can see here helped motivate me, so thank you. Uh, anyway, let's get started. The film starts with a burglar sneaking into somebody's house. However, this time it doesn't look like we're starting with the Dursleys. Where are we? He then makes a noise, but he seems to get away with it. And is that the rat guy from the previous film? Yeah, it looks just like him. Anyway, the burglar is just standing by a wide open door so they see him. This guy's going straight to jail. Oh. Uh, turns out that was all just a weird dream that Ron was having. Bit of a waste of time, but okay. Wait, why was Hermione in his bedroom? Sorry, Amos. We then meet Cedric Diggory, the star of this film, who was just sort of hanging out in a tree. Which is kind of weird, but the girls seem to like it, I guess. They then climb a small mountain to reach a teleporting shoe. Yeah, I don't get it either. They decide to do a countdown. After three, okay. Oh, we're going on one then, are we? Okay, fine. So anyway, Hermione and Ron get dumped on their backs as Cedric glides gracefully to the floor. Your children almost died. So they arrive at what seems to be some sort of wizard festival. But there's a tent already set up. Do people just show up and pick a tent? Do, who put this here? Whose furniture is this? Where do those windows look out to? What about the... Oh, we're moving on, okay. Turns out that we're here for the Quidditch World Cup, where Lucius Malfoy tries to insult Mr. Weaselby. If it rains, you'll be the first to know. What does that even mean? Whatever. They take their seats and the game abruptly starts as the Irish National Anthem plays. Then the Bulgarians interrupt their entrance by flying straight through their mascot, killing it instantly. Now I'm a little bit confused by the logistics of this next part. So did each person bring a small piece of this huge crumb banner from home? Or was each piece just waiting for them under their seats? How did they know when to hold up their poster? I don't know. Well, I can't wait to see how this plays out. It's going to be amazing. I wonder who's... Wait. What? What happened to the game? Then Ron's brothers, left and right Weaselby, make fun of him for having a crush on Crump. There's suddenly chaos outside as Mr. Weaselby decides that his daughter's safety isn't his problem anymore. I don't see how it is actually, but okay. Uh, angry supporters seem to have started a riot. In the confusion, Hermione says hurry. But she pronounces it really weird. Anyway, they light the entire place on fire and the whole place is burned to the ground. What an embarrassment for the sport. This guy draws a fancy magical picture in the sky, but like, why? Then Mr. Weaselby shows up, suddenly aware that he has to look after his children. Death eaters. Death what? Why does it matter if they're deaf? Follow me. Where are we going? All of you, this way. Wait, can someone explain what a death eaters? Oh, the scene's over, isn't it? The kids make their way to Hogwarts by train, where Hermione and Ron take up a whole carriage themselves. Typical. The trolley person comes by, and this new girl looks at the director really awkwardly, and then he just tells her to get off the set and she leaves. Then Hermione starts talking to Ron, but as usual, she isn't really looking at him. You know Sirius will want to hear about this. Then she's suddenly cut off. What you saw. And then we just see an owl fly away from the train. Did Hermione just turn into an owl and fly away? That makes no sense, right? Right? Anyway, they arrive at the school, but then these Pegasuses show up, and Hagrid uses some paddles to guide them in. Hogwarts has a runway? Sorry, but this makes no sense at all. I've looked at various schematics for the Hogwarts grounds, and I don't see a single stretch of flat land that would be long enough to use for a runway. Anyway, Hagrid almost dies. Should have cleared the runway. Next, the boat turns up, and that's the Bulgarian flag I'd recognise it anywhere. I don't see a port for them to dock at. I guess they spent the school budget on the runway. Wait, who's talking? Oh, it's just Dumbledore. The Tri Wizard Tournament. Try wizard, as in three wizards, right? Or are we just going to make up a number? Let me guess, four? Um, what's going on now? Well, this is nice, isn't it? And for the second time this film, the Bulgarians have interrupted an entrance. They don't look very happy. 
Though I suppose I wouldn't be very happy either if I had to sail around an entire continent when I could have just teleported here using a shoe. But you know, then they all sit down for dinner and you can see here that Flitwick looks completely different to the first see. film. Yeah, see here? He- uh, Oh my god, Hagrid just stabbed him. Forgot what I was saying, someone help this man. Then it starts raining indoors. They should have built a roof instead of building a runway. Luckily this weird man arrives to stop it so that they don't all get slightly wet. And then he just openly drinks alcohol in front what of the children. The school needs to be shut down. The guy from the World Cup shows up and he's doing something really weird with his hands. Stop that. It's making me uncomfortable. Then this thing randomly sets on fire. The Goblet of Fire! Oh, that's the title of a book I read once. Then the Bulgarian man notices that somebody accidentally left the doors open and he really helpfully closes them. Maybe they're not so bad after all. Next is the Defense Against the Dark Arts class, where the kids meet their new teacher. Dumbledore asked me. End of story. Goodbye, the end. He checks if they have questions. Any questions? And Hermione has three. Three, sir. And they are so named? Because they are unforgivable. What kind of questions are they? One of them will. We'll earn you a one-way ticket to Azkaban. Just Correct. for asking questions? Which curse shall we see first? None of them. This is a children's film. Give us a curse. Stop asking the children to well, swear. Hermione looks freaked out as the teacher dips his hand into a jar and pulls out a spider, but it's kind of tiny. Not the first time he's used that spell. Imperial. Then he just starts like messing around with it. No worry, it's completely harmless. Yeah, of course it's harmless. You're the only danger to these kids. She's lethal. So it is dangerous. Someone report this teacher. This isn't normal behavior. Then he just tortures the spider to death. He realizes he's crossed the line, but he's in too deep now. What's Neville doing up there? <clears throat> anyway, he just doubles down and dumps the dead spider on Hermione's desk. She looks traumatized. Oh, is that all you have to say for yourself? After class, Ron misreads Hermione's body language. Brilliant, isn't he? No, Ron, he isn't. Uh -huh. Neville seems upset and Moody right. drags him back upstairs. I want to show you something. It's probably another dead spider if I had to guess Neville. Then this stained glass window cries. Sure, why not? Next, the children gather to put their names forward for the tournament. Cedric Diggory goes first and his friends cheer him as Ron watches from the sidelines. It's a good thing left and right weasel be on here to See make this. Oh no, there they are. This is she explains age. that they're too young to apply, but they think that sounds dumb, so they just jump in. Yes! Their celebration is short-lived as they get thrown out of the circle. Oh, this CGI hasn't aged very well. Then they start to wrestle as Hermione decides to read a book in what may possibly be the worst ever environment to read a book. Then Victor Crumb walks in and... Wait a second, go back a bit. Yeah, and stop right there. Who's this? I know it's supposed to be right, Weaselby, but that's not him, is it? I even have the 4K version of the film here so that we can look a bit closer. Yeah, definitely not him. Anyway, Crumb walks in and places his name. He stares at Hermione, wondering why she's sitting there, reading a book. Hermione smiles back, suddenly realising that this isn't the library. The school gets together to watch the champions get selected. I feel like the kids don't actually spend very long in class. Anyway, first to be picked is Crumb. Victor Crumb! I'm sure Ron will be happy. Then the next name to be picked is Fleur Delacour. Wait, are you reading it or am I? And last to be picked is Hogwarts, Hogwarts champion, champion Cedric, Cedric Diggory. Diggory. Oh fine, Dumbledore's doing it I guess, fine. We now have our three champions. Well, three champions for the, the Triwizard end, Tournament. Only one they finally go got their math correct. You know, it's nice that this film actually seems to be making sense for the first time in the whole series. You know, this one might be the best one yet. Well, it was nice while it lasted I guess. But luckily when Dumbledore goes to read the paper, it's just blank. So they all just look around awkwardly. No. What? Relax, just ignore it. Wait, why is everyone looking at the camera? And who's that back there? Was that fake robot Hagrid again? Anyway, the three champions listen in as they discuss what to do about the blank piece Probably of paper. Fire constitutes a binding magical contract. Just throw it away, dummies. Wait, did they just hear me? The next day, there's this really long shot of an owl delivering a letter. But why? Was that owl important? Wait, remember Hermione earlier on the train? Uh, Is she secretly an owl? Um, I'm not an owl! Um, that kind of sounds like something an owl would say, don't you think? Wait, where are you going? Come back here. D hey! That's the end of part one. Part two is out next Monday. If you subscribe and hit the notification bell, you'll know when it comes out, but also you can just remember that it's next Monday. That would be fine too. Uh, but if you hit if you hit the subscribe button, then the number goes up, which I like. 
Um, if you like this, then please give a like and a comment, um, like one of these. These are great. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, see, see you next week. Remember to come back. A lot of people don't come back. If you can see here, people don't come back. Uh, please remember... Oh, the video's over. Okay.